Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The video camera is running. Crime, criminals, and the cops who stop them. This is the real thing. We have gathered footage from around the world, from crimes in progress, news investigations, undercover stings and surveillance cameras. Much of this footage has never before been seen, from chases to shootouts. This show will take you for a walk on the wild side. One thing I've learned in 25 years of police work is a healthy respect for the danger in dealing with all kinds of criminals. In the next hour, we're going to take you from rampaging tanks to rebellious teenagers. The one thing they all have in common is that they all can be dangerous. San Antonio, Texas, 7 in the morning, through gas stations, stop signs, and vacant lots. The near TC, near TC, almost wrecked. The 16-year-old driver of this stolen car will do anything to get away from pursuing officers. Also on board, three innocent, terrified friends who can only hold on. Watch as the young driver cuts off this oncoming car. Fishtails through the smoke, regains control, and drives off like nothing happened. Here, he flies through a red light, almost hitting a pedestrian and swerving to avoid a van. When he encounters an upcoming traffic light, he doesn't go around it, he goes through it. The only thing keeping this kid going is pure desperation. And a car that can seemingly take endless abuse. All right, we're in for the freeway, we're in for the freeway now. Stop your vehicle now, stop your car now. And yet another desperation move, he tries cutting through this field but he quickly loses control and spins out in the dirt. What happens next shows the kind of friend this boy really is. He actually jumps from the car, leaving his panicked friends to roll off without a driver. Somebody get to the car, you need to get to the car. Foot pursuit, a foot pursuit. The boy doesn't get far. Total time of this chase, a mere five and a half minutes. The 16-year-old was freed from the Texas Youth Commission only five days earlier, but he may not go back there because of his willingness to risk the lives of everybody on the road, including his friends. They now want to try him as an adult. A young kid in a fast car who won't be stopped. Is there anything more reckless? Prevention is the best key because after, they're, after they've crossed a line, a lot of times it's too late. Vandalism, the willful destruction of private property. Blowing up mailboxes is one thing, but in Florida, a handful of teenagers try to destroy an entire house from the inside out. Armed with baseball bats, hammers, their feet and their fists, these kids trash everything in sight in a terrifying orgy of vandalism. Their assault is relentless. There's nothing in this model home that remains unbroken, unkicked, or unsmashed. Fortunately, hammers and bats are all these kids have. Anything more in this house might have been leveled to its foundation. Ironically, the very videotape these teens intended as a trophy allows police to positively identify each of them. And when the damage is done, who gets to pay for it all? The teens' parents, for now. Ultimately, the kids will have to repay them, but it may take a while. The total damage of their spree? over $100,000. By themselves, some kids can be incredibly reckless. When a few of their friends join in, they seem to become even bolder. But when hundreds, even thousands, get together for the same destructive purpose, the result can be devastating. Westwood Village, California. I had just finished dinner, and I was driving around the village about 7.15, and then 
In the matter of 10 minutes, it went from five, six pedestrians on the street to 1,000 people. Thousands of UCLA Bruin fans rushed the streets to celebrate their NCAA basketball championship. With no respect for private property, privileged students suddenly attacked this radio station van. They smashed the glass and crushed the roof. But they want more. With their schoolmates egging them on, they finally flipped the van, nearly crushing two students. Amazingly, cops are present but they decide to wait to make their move. It's now a mad scene played out on city streets. It turns into a competitive free-for-all. Who can do the most damage? Students climb the street light and desperately try to break it from its cement foundation. It is an accident just waiting to happen. Cells, get your people to the right. Lieutenant Durham recalls how quickly things changed. And the crowd is going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's building, and the police are now saying, hey, this is a changing event. The cops try to take control of this out of control situation. To be successful, they need a lot of backup. Several police and riot gear do arrive and charge the mob. More police are ordered to move in, shoulder to shoulder. They line the street, shooting tear gas at the defiant students. A turning point of the evening, they eventually put down the riot. On this day, 20 arrests are made. 12 are injured, some seriously. The Bruins' victory is just a bitter memory. When a juvenile runs from the law, watch out. Because of their age, their impulsiveness, it can cause some of the most dangerous chases we see. Lakewood, California. Bolting through traffic at 70 miles an hour, two juveniles in a stolen car lead police on a wild rush hour pursuit. With the arrogance of youth in the driver's seat, they blitz through intersections and barrel over curbs. Wait, the door's opening, a door has opened. These suspects are gonna run. They don't get far. One of the suspects is caught moments later. The other is found later that evening. And just where did this young daredevil end up hiding? cowering under his bed. As fearless as they think they are, emotionally, they're still kids. They have a difficult time driving. They have a difficult time making the appropriate decision to stop. And they're going to continue until the police officer stops or they crash. Tampa, Florida. Talk about teenagers having difficulty. After hitting a tree, this carload of teens is in for another surprise. It stays with them. And although the driver has lost visibility, for a moment, he actually seems to be driving better than he was before. The moment the tree falls off, he starts losing control and plows into this grassy field. He comes back around, spins out furiously in the soft earth, and finally hits a pole. A TC, TC, pursuit has terminated, code four. Lincoln, Montana. Sirens and screeching shatter the thin air of this quiet mountain community. A desperate teenager leads a local sheriff in hot pursuit. She veers into opposing traffic, narrowly missing this big rig. But a moment later, off in the distance, a logging truck is pulling into the road. The officer sees the inevitable and can only watch. The officer expects the worst. Amazingly, okay? the woman is alive. Don't move. Just stay there. If the officer seems angry, it's only because he knows just how avoidable this accident was. In Manchester, England, two 16-year-olds and a stolen Peugeot run from local constables. He hasn't got good control of the vehicle. They turn the wrong way up a one-way street. To the shop, right? No entry. Overhead, a helicopter with heat-sensitive radar turns night into day as he tracks the pursuit. They race toward a red light, not even slowing down. The lights are on and red. it happens. They barely miss the first car, but the second one clips their bumper. They spin out 360 degrees and hit a street lamp. Miraculously, these young men are able to walk away from this accident with only minor scrapes. Tonight, they were incredibly lucky.
When a teen steals a car, it's frequently called joyriding, but the consequences are anything but joyful. Property damage, personal injury, and broken lives are always just around the corner whenever good judgment gives way to recklessness. Coming up on world's wildest police videos, chaos in the streets, from Moscow to middle America, from trains to tanks. Nobody get a hold of the armory and ride out of this thing is loaded. From the frying pan into the fire, it's 100% heart pumping adrenaline. Modern Moscow, communists in bone-breaking riots, German cars in high-speed pursuits, Soviet sailors in head-cracking brawls. No translation necessary, the language is mayhem. <laughs> Moscow, Russia. It's the worst political violence in this city in nearly a century. For the first time ever, former KGB officials have released this video, which has never before been seen. Thousands of screaming communist protesters hurl sharpened sticks and bottles at Russian police. The police fire back with water cannons and tear gas. The communists want things their way, the old way. To them, anything that resembles the new democratic regime is the enemy. For a time, Protesters seem to overwhelm riot police. The police try to put down the vicious street fighting. It seems hopeless, but police do prevail. Watch as the communists take control of this riot police truck. As the police move in, the rioters throw the truck in reverse and try to crush the officers. Police fight valiantly to regain control of their vehicle. Just as they do, the demonstrators disable the truck and continue their fierce battle. Rushing to put out the fire, the driver of this fire engine is struck in the head by a rock and knocked unconscious. When he crashes into the wall, the rioters continue to pelt him with stones. By day's end, hundreds of people are injured, including many police. This Russian woman cries out, but no one seems to listen. On this day, Russia and its people pay a very high price for political and social change. In Russia, they train for car chases, just like they train for everything else. Hard, fast, and they don't pull any punches. They have just one policy. Nobody gets away. Moscow, Russia, where modern capitalism has brought modern problems, like traffic jams and police chases. The Moscow police are equipped with brand new Ford Crown Victorias powered by police pursuit engines. They get word that a stolen Mercedes is headed their way. These officers are trained in the use of the American Lojack tracking system. In Russia, they need it. This Mercedes was stolen from a member of the Russian mafia. The gangsters have so often themselves been the target of car thieves, they've equipped all their cars with the Lojack so the police can get them back. The car thieves see an opening and suddenly accelerate, but the pursuit vehicles stay close behind. Sergei Konstantin is a colonel in the Moscow militia. When this chase began, Sergei was training an officer in the use of Lojack technology. The clever thieves now try to lose the police in heavy traffic. Now to make matters worse, there's an accident up ahead. It slows down the cops, but not the Mercedes. If it wasn't for the helicopter overhead, the crooks would be gone but the police are now able to surround the German car. Then it appears the suspects will pull over and just give up. But when the police stop, he's off and running again. The Mercedes driver knows a few tricks himself. Watch as he pretends to turn right and then slips ahead through the heavy traffic. But Sergei isn't fooled. This time they intend to pin him in so he can't get away. Just like in America, it isn't over till it's over. The crooks try to run, but they don't get far. In Russia, the police don't coddle criminals. Penalties are long and harsh, but apparently that doesn't deter thieves, because back in the police car, the lowjack is already going off again. Russia Navy Day, an annual celebration in Moscow, Russia. 
The day begins with marches and the singing of praise for the defenders of the nation's waters. The sailors are filled with good cheer and strong drinks. Perhaps missing the sea, they jump into a pond, splashing, laughing, and dunking each other. This sailor gets dunked over and over again, but is too drunk to stop it. The good times don't last long. As the vodka flows, the fists begin to fly. Here a man runs away only to be chased down and beaten. A sailor brags about being on the best ship in the fleet, and a rival unit retorts with a shove, which quickly turns into punching and kicking. One drunken sailor knocks another unconscious with a forceful kick, enraging his comrades. A police officer tries to quiet the rowdy crowd. They gang up on him, forcing the cop to retreat. Russian police are called in, swinging batons first and asking questions later. Initially, there is calm, but the Russian police are soon overwhelmed by the combat-trained servicemen. The fighting escalates. As the inebriated rioters egg each other on, they smash up stores and set cars on fire. Punching matches break out continuously. This time, police are on hand, but the rioters run for it. The sailor doesn't like being videotaped and smashes the camera. An outdoor cafe, what starts as a discussion, turns into an argument. The cafe explodes as a fight breaks out. Fists fly. No one can escape the police batons. Innocent patrons try to move out of the way. This time, the Russian police are prepared. The policemen arrest the rioters, ending the violence on what should have been a glorious day. Just like in America, Russian police are chasing down the bad guys, stopping the troublemakers before they get out of hand. One out of eight traffic deaths is the result of a crash with a large truck. Unfortunately, most of these accidents also involve much smaller vehicles. In some cases, the truck is clearly at fault, and the damage is terrible. But too often, it's the fault of reckless passenger cars, taking foolish chances with trucks. At 55 miles an hour, it takes a fully loaded 18-wheeler the length of a football field to stop. And the results can be horrendous. Most truck accidents are caused either by improper lane changes, a passenger car, and just taking unnecessary risks. But driving in the blind spot is the number one offender. Amazingly, this man is unhurt when he and his car were dragged 150 yards underneath the semi. He's just lucky. His car was virtually invisible, hidden in a blind spot alongside the truck. If you can't see the mirrors of the truck, or you can't see the driver in the mirror, he can't see you. Put yourself in the driver's seat of the nation's big rigs. Imagine that you cannot stop if you are cut off, cannot see if someone is in your blind spot, and can't do anything when you've lost control. Carelessness around big rigs won't get you there any faster. As a matter of fact, this kind of carelessness may not get you there at all. Next on World's Wildest Police Video. The bad guys hit the gas. From crowded city streets. We have clocked the suspect at 90 miles an hour. To dusty desert roads. Oh, he almost lost it there. These criminals will drive anything, anywhere, any way they can. Watch out. Out of control crooks. We may see a head on collision here. Clash with the law. When it comes to evading justice, these guys have reached the end of the line. Campbell County, Tennessee. Two local deputies pursue an armed man wanted for kidnapping, rape, and attempted murder. When they tried to kill me three or four times. With a suspect like this, you don't ask him to pull over. You make him. They begin ramming the vehicle, a tricky procedure at 110 miles an hour. Moments later, he clips the officer's right front bumper. Hey, Randy, Randy, back off us. The officers have to look for help wherever they can get it. They call ahead to some big rigs. Hey, what are you big trucks 
The truckers cooperate. The suspect is now totally blocked in. Okay, well, here we go. Hey, Randy, let's get him, buddy. Let's get him right here. Come on, Gary, let's stop him. Incredibly, he manages to squeeze through. He's made it. He's made it through. We're still going. We're still going. The officers are ready to chase this suspect as far as necessary. But there's one thing in a two-hour chase you either have or you don't. I'm almost out of gas. There you They have to end this chase now. Again, they risk their lives by ramming the vehicle. Suddenly, the suspect bolts from the highway and onto another road. I don't know where we're going there. We're going. Trying to get out of this mess. Wait just a minute. The officer sees the suspect at the bottom of the hill and races to him. Over three states, two hours, and two almost empty gas tanks later, the suspect is finally stopped. When the officers pull over a car, they never know what they're going to find inside. And when they ask permission to search for weapons and the suspect refuses, the cops get suspicious. Wilmington, Ohio. Even when a pursuit ends quietly and the driver pulls over, that isn't always the end of the story. In this case, it's the beginning of a nightmare. First, the trooper has no reason to be suspicious. Good afternoon, gentlemen. It looks like nothing more than an expired license plate. OK, got any kind of ID with you? Two brothers who forgot to register their truck. You got no idea whatsoever in this vehicle? No, sir. I got it at the home. Got any registration with you? Yes, sir. Let's step back here with me a second, sir. There are too many things missing, too many wrong answers. You have any guns, knives, clubs, or stuff like that on you? Very good. Listen, sir, I don't want no problem. I'm not going to give you any problem. When the trooper tries to pat the man down for weapons, the man resists. Any guns, knives, clubs, stuff like that on you, sir? I don't want you going and searching through all my stuff. I'm not searching through your stuff, sir. But it's what he says that alarms the trooper. I feel violated. I'm not violating you, sir. I feel violated. I don't want to be violated like this. While the trooper is busy talking to the driver, watch the man in the passenger seat of the truck. Close examination of this tape suggests that what the man is doing is pulling up the strap of a bulletproof vest. Now, the choice from where we go from here is entirely up to you. The suspect makes a wild move. They are firing point blank, but the officer doesn't realize the gunman is wearing a bulletproof vest. The other officer, following the letter of the law, cannot fire on the unarmed driver until the man actually endangers the officer's life. Minutes later, another officer spots the Suburban. Suddenly, automatic fire rips into the trooper's car. The officer dove from the car just as two bullets from the assault rifle hit the exact spot where he was sitting. A search of the Suburban revealed more assault weapons than thousands of rounds of ammo. But when the brother who did the initial shooting was brought to trial, he claimed that he had fired in self-defense. Then the jury saw the videotape. The video shows the first shot is fired without provocation directly at the officer through the driver's side window, barely missing his head. When the video was shown, the shooter was convicted of attempted murder. Both brothers were members of the Aryan Brotherhood, wanted in Arkansas for terrorist activities. Because this officer followed up on his suspicions, these would-be terrorists are off the street. Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. This bizarre and dangerous chase began in rush hour and baffled police for more than an hour. There's eight patrol cars behind it, nine patrol cars, 10 patrol cars behind it. But this fellow has been driving very erratically going from side to side. So far, we haven't seen him hit any other uh, cars, but we've seen him come awfully close. The suspect is driving the powerful Chevrolet Caprice, the same car many police departments use. So he is able to stay ahead of them when he wants to. It just seems that sometimes he doesn't want to. He just jumped the curb back, going the other direction again, and uh, successfully got around. Looks like the police car was trying to uh, box him in up. Okay, now he's 
He's turning around. He's now like going the wrong way on the freeway. A traffic officer's worst fear, which can turn deadly in seconds. Oh, that was a close one there. Let's see where he's going to go this time. Yep, he's, he's just going the wrong way. on. It's an entrance ramp, and he's exiting on it. The people are pulling over when he comes through, and uh, he's still going the wrong direction. And we may see a head-on collision here in a moment because uh, there's people still trying to get on. The police were unwilling to follow the wrong way up the entrance ramp. So at this point, there's a good chance this suspect could get away. I, I'm looking up ahead. I don't see any uh, city police vehicles up ahead, so he is off. Incredibly, after more than an hour pursuit with police from six agencies, never more than a few feet away, they have lost this man. I can't see exactly where he is. But there he is. But uh, he eluded the uh, police officers again, and he's going to be back in traffic again. I thought they were going to trap him there. They looked like they had blocked uh, the exits on that, and uh, he got out the one area that he could. He's turned around again. He just got off of Royal Lane. He's north on MacArthur and uh, headed up towards North Lake uh, area. Now he's turning around. Oh, they just they just jammed him. They just jammed him. They're pulling him out of the car. And uh, they've got him out on the ground there. And it uh, looks like uh, he is in custody. They've got him secured. Trains. We never even think about them until we hear that clanging bell. And then it's too late. According to the National Transportation Safety Board, a collision occurs at a train crossing every 90 minutes. Unfortunately, they are often fatal. The ironic thing is, no other vehicle is so easy for you to avoid, or so deadly when you don't. This car is stalled on the tracks. The driver pleads for someone to alert the railroad. The call is made, but the 4,000-ton train can't get stopped in time. Her brand new Cadillac gets pulverized. This is all that remains of her prized possession. But most of these accidents are completely avoidable. He apparently did not like the fact that the arm was down. He drove around, and he was struck by a northbound train. An amateur cameraman was rolling tape when a semi started across the train tracks before the other side was clear. Even the mighty semi is no match for the monstrous train. Backed up traffic could only watch as the driver narrowly escaped from the cab of the truck. The rules are simple. Don't try to beat a train. Do stop at every crossing whether you see a train or not. And don't ever ignore those flashing lights. Still to come on world's wildest police videos. Suspects flee. Seriously mean to get away. Sparks fly. And cars explode. Fasten your seatbelts for the most ground-shaking, most car-crunching, most mind-blowing pursuit ever. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Junior goes too far. Driver and passengers are juvenile. Sparky closes the bar. Nearly lost it there, nearly lost it. Gangsters wrap their car. And the answer to crime Get out of the vehicle now. is doing time. This is Montebello, California. Here cops train for pursuits to end fast and safe. They know to put the brakes on reckless criminals, a cop's best weapon is the bumper of his car. Whittier, California. This van has been reported stolen. The police have been chasing this van from Ontario to Whittier. And we have clocked the suspect at 90 miles an hour, once through a local school zone. There are motorists who are swerving to avoid collision here. A van going like 80 almost ran right into me. It looks like these guys seriously mean to get away. They are not stopping until something stops them. After a gun is thrown from the van, the police decide to take desperate measures. These officers are trying to get close enough so that they can use what they call the pit maneuver. And what that involves is tapping the rear bumper, forcing that vehicle to turn. Watch what happens now when the van goes into this corner. They hit the van. The van has hit the curb. It's overturned. Oh, they hit him again. While the suspects are still stunned, the police surround the van. Guns drawn, kicking in the windows. They are pulling suspects from the van. The police would like to subdue these suspects before they can even think about putting up a fight. So thanks to a quick and daring response, this pursuit was ended before anyone got hurt. Drinking and driving. 
a lethal combination. When officers pull over inebriated drivers, they find themselves faced with everything from the purely pathetic to the outrageously dangerous. These are five women who will do anything to get out of going to jail. Watch what I'm doing. Watch very carefully. One, two, three, four. Four, three, two, one. One, two, one, two three, four. Four, three. Now, wait a minute. Four. Go ahead. One, two, three, four. Four, two, three, one. One, two, three, four. Four, two, three, one. If she'd kept driving, she'd be counting her broken bones. This next woman executes the finger to nose test. She's so drunk that when the officer walks away, she keeps going and going and going. When her left arm tires, she takes Tipsy to a whole new level. Good thing she didn't try that while driving. Oftentimes when we pick up drunken drivers, they're extremely funny. If they're at a party, you'd probably appreciate that. But on the highways, that's a serious problem. What I'm trying to do is determine your ability to perform these exercises. Realizing she's busted, our third driver falls apart. I'm sorry. I don't drink. I'm sorry. And who can resist the tears of a distraught woman? The cops who've seen it all, that's who. Okay. At this time, we're going to step inside the Batmobile. Why don't we step up inside, man? Busted, this crybaby will soon be singing the beer bottle blues in jail. With alcohol affecting a driver's judgment, police have to be ready for anything, even the absurd. No, I won't do it. I want my lawyer. I want my lawyer and I want now. I want my lawyer. But with 17,000 DUI fatalities a year, there's no sympathy and there's no excuse. No, I will not turn around. Do I have the right to remain silent? Yes, you do. Good. Joe. I want my lawyer. I am a good girl. I want my lawyer. You have the I right to lawyer. remain silent. She doesn't know when to give up. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. I want my lawyer. When they're done with this one, she's going to wish she stayed in her room. Cops never know who they're going to pull over. With this next woman, their own safety is in jeopardy. The cops quickly subdue this violently flailing drunk. Calm down. Calm down. She does for the moment. But the next time she acts out, the cop decides not to give this violent woman any more chances. When cops take drunk drivers off the road, they know the potential risks. They also know they probably saved a life. Pleasant Grove, Utah. 2.15 in the morning, time for drunks to head home when this officer spots a possible DUI. At speeds in excess of 80 miles per hour on these country roads, the officer is eating a lot of dust. Copy, continuing northbound on first At one point, the driver seems like he'll stop and then pulls ahead. He is now driving with no concern for life or limb. The other patrol units try to slow him down, but he just isn't stopping so they decide to put down spike strips to blow out his tires. But watch what happens. He hits the spike strip dead center. You can see both tires explode. But something is wrong. He should be stopping, but he isn't. He's driving on flat tires, shooting up showers of sparks. Is this man crazy, drunk, or what? His tire goes rolling into the ditch. Unbelievably, the man is still going 80 miles an hour riding on the rims. The wheels are tearing up the road, but he's passing everything in sight. Then both tires collapse and the truck is entirely on the rims. We got fluid on the ground now. Oil and gasoline are spilling onto the road. Flames and sparks are pouring out of the truck. On every bump, the car is bottoming out and pieces of the muffler are flying behind, smashing the officer's window. Oh, God. Miraculously, he's able to pull the truck off the road before it explodes. Calmly, the officer asks him a question. And in four little words, the man explains it all. What is your problem, bud? <laughs> I need a beer. Los Angeles. Four teenagers have stolen a mobile home. When the police try to stop them, they take off, leading the police on a wild five-hour chase well into the next morning. This RV must have a huge gas tank. We've been following it now for over six freeways. The suspects careen through rush hour traffic at 90 miles an hour. 
other cars gladly get out of the way. And then they exit the freeway and take the vehicle off-road, hoping the 36-foot white motorhome would blend into the high California desert. And it looks like these guys uh, are doing about 40 miles an hour on these very bumpy trails. They somehow managed to make it through this rugged terrain. Okay, we've got a hairpin turn coming up. Uh, talk about a sporty course. So, some of these trails are barely wide enough for a dirt bike, let alone a 35-foot RV. Looks like he, he might be stuck here. No, he's putting, he's, he's in reverse, he's on the move. Through sagebrush and Joshua trees, the motorhome continues on its reckless path. But as long as there's some kind of road in front of them and gas in the tank, they'll keep running. We're, we're now downhill again, and you've got to wonder how long... Okay, stand by. Oh! He almost lost it there. But it's only a matter of time until the driver's luck runs out. Watch what happens when he tries to get past this dry wash. He gets stuck, and not knowing what else to do, he panics and takes off on foot but he and the other suspects have nowhere to hide. They had bragged before that, that they could outrun the, the uh, police. Their joyriding is over for now. The only four-wheeling they'll be doing for a while is in the back of this highway patrol unit. Still to come on World's Wildest Police Video, the most unbelievable chase of all time. A stolen tank on a rampage turns this peaceful community into a battleground. 126,000 pounds run amok. It's like a war zone over here. Next. <laughs> Ever see a military tank in action? These monsters tip the scales at 60 tons. And when they're on a mission, nothing will stop them. The destructive powers of a tank are seemingly limitless. Imagine what would happen if one of them got loose in your neighborhood. Sydney, Australia. A lunatic steals a tank and goes joyriding through the streets. Cops can't stop him until he runs out of gas. Another beautiful day in sunny Southern California. It's late afternoon when Barbell D. Agostino strolls outside to get the paper. I heard voices from the helicopter saying, Please go inside. This is not a joke. I was in the locker room uh, at the end of my shift, and I heard the call come out on the radio. So I went back and got my patrol car and headed to the area. Service station attendant Charlie Mustafa is on lunch when the neighborhood calm is broken. Then we heard a rumbling sound, boom, boom, boom. San Diego, California. Without warning, this quiet community becomes the target of a deranged man's fury. 35-year-old Sean Nelson steals an M6 military tank from a local armory and takes it on a tour of destruction. In minutes, police and news crews flock to the area. Uh, I'll call it the best I can. I'm trying to get this whole uh, mess on videotape. It's in big trouble. Uh, yeah, that's putting it my way. Piner's partner, Officer Paul Paxton, is also on call. He learns the tank's driver is an ex-soldier and a professional. He uh, had served in the uh, Army as a, a tank crewman, so he definitely had tank experience. Uh, he's running over fire hydrants. you got hydrants that are blowing water in the air. The tank plows through the neighborhood. The driver hell-bent on destruction. This is the San Diego Police Department. Everybody go back in your house and get off the street. Barbell stops in her tracks, shocked at the sight before her. So I'm looking down the street, and I realized that he was actually aiming for my car. There was no doubt about it. He's doing these cars on purpose. Oh, my God. Oh, holy. Yeah, he's rolling over just about anything he wants to. Nobody on the street is safe. It's like a war zone over here. I know he hit one occupied vehicle with a, with a family in it, and they, they just barely escaped before the, the car was crushed. Oh, my God. devastation continues. The police still have no idea how to stop this madman's rampage. It was during that time of day where people are getting off work or out of school, so the streets were very congested with people. He's coming up towards the school. Okay. The tank's power is mind-boggling. It mows down a traffic light, snapping it like a toothpick. Police are desperate to stop the street-side demolition. They called our, for our SWAT guys to see if they had anything in their arsenal that could stop him, and 
They said no. They do not have the ability. They do not. That's do not. But police have more on their hands than just a runaway tank. Somebody get a hold of the armory and find out if this thing is loaded. Yes, it's a vehicle, but it's also a gun. And at that time, it was the biggest gun on the streets of San Diego. So it shoots at a mile a second, and we ain't got nothing in our department that can stop it. And to make matters worse, the deranged ex-soldier behind the controls is also drunk. Mental problems plus alcohol. A ticking time bomb waiting to explode. Suddenly, police are faced with even a greater danger. Yeah, he zigzagged a little bit, and he made an abrupt right turn. And he struck one of the support pillars that hold up this uh, pedestrian footbridge. And he backed up, struck it again, backed up, struck it again. About two more hits, and this bridge is down. Well, after a while, he, he gave up on trying to knock this pole out. And he continued on south. Inexplicably, the crazed driver veers away from the bridge and heads straight for the center divide. Paul and his partner, Rick, come up with a plan of action. That's when I made a decision I'm going to go on the tank. There's no time to stop oncoming traffic. If the tank breaks free, the results will be catastrophic. Rick and Paul make their move. Once I was on top of the vehicle, I cut the padlock off. At that point, we could look down in and we could see the driver. Now we continually shouted for him to stop the tank, let us see his hands. He looked back, looked up at us, no facial expression, didn't say anything. Right now, he's trying to come undone. I made my decision right then that uh, the tank had to be stopped right now and the driver had to be stopped. And so I fired one round, struck him on the shoulder and traveled diagonally down through his body. As quickly as it started, this ride comes to a deadly close. In that circumstance, there was no other options available. We had exhausted every other possibility that we had at our, our disposal. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in damages are the result of a madman's fury. Miraculously, no one was hurt in the rampage. Still, San Diego will never be the same. It reminded me of something you'd see on CNN on Bosnia. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's rolling over just about anything he wants to. We ain't got nothing in our department that can stop it. It's like a war zone over here. When we come back with world's wildest police videos, a frightening pursuit on Easter Sunday morning, and two officers are an inspiration to us all. Every single day, police officers are called upon to deal with incredibly dangerous situations. They are asked to put their own life on the line in order to protect and serve. This is every officer's duty, even if the life they're saving is a criminal. As long as they think they can get away, some will run and some will crash and burn. But when people criticize the police and their pursuit policies, they might consider Officer Paredes and Thundercloud, who ended this high-speed pursuit by risking their own lives to save this fleeing suspect from certain death. We interviewed Officer Paredes. When someone's in trouble, we're going to help them. Whether he's a suspect, victim, it doesn't matter. It's just a human being in trouble, and we're going to help him. Luckily, Officer Paredes and his partner were able to pull the driver to safety just seconds before the gas tank exploded. This man owes his life to cops who truly believe they are there to protect and serve. After looking at the mayhem and all the madness, after seeing the crime, the criminals, the whore and the waste, it's, like a war zone over here. it's easy to forget the thin blue line to the right. that stands between the innocent and the guilty. Next week on World's Wildest Police Videos, a renegade cop tries to escape. A Chevy Blazer bites the dust. And a hostage drama ravages a school zone. Prisoners fight, tempers flare. And a woman's life depends on a single shot. It's a life or death battle that police fight every day.